In the last module, we saw this concept of transition systems, which consist of finitely many states, actions, and transitions between states. We also saw some examples of transition systems. In this module, we will be looking at how one can model hardware circuits as transition systems. Let's start with some basics of hardware circuits. I think most of you know these gates OR and NOT XOR. So OR is a gate which receives two inputs X1 and X2 and gives an output. A gate is nothing but a circuit. So what is the function of this circuit? If the inputs are 0 and 0, the value of the output Y is 0. If the inputs are 0 and 1, the value of the output is 1. If the inputs are 1 and 0, the output is 1 again. And if the inputs are 1 and 1, it's again 1. So this computes the OR of these two. Similarly, the AND of these two is 1 when both X1 and X2 are 1. Otherwise, it is 0. The NOT receives a single input and gives a single output. So it just complements the input. So if the input is 0, the output is 1. If the input is 1, the output is 0. Exclusive OR or XOR is 1 if exactly one of them is 1. So for instance, if X1 and X2 are 0, the output is 0. If X1 is 0 and X2 is 1, the output is 1 because exactly one of the inputs is 1. Similarly, if X1 is 1 and X2 is 0, the output is 1. This one, when X1 and X2 are both 1, the output is 0. This is the only difference with respect to the OR gate. So these are very basic things about circuits. Now using these gates, you can combine them to get more circuits. So these are the Boolean function representations of these gates. Now when you combine them, what is the output? The output Y is going to be not of XOR of X1 and X2. So given the inputs, you have to first compute the exclusive OR and then take the NOT. So this can be represented by this Boolean function. So if the inputs are 0 and 0, XOR of 0 and 0 is 0 and NOT of 0 is 1. If inputs are 0 and 1, exclusive OR of 0 and 1 is 1 and NOT of 1 is 0. So you can also check the other two entries in the truth table representation of the Boolean function. Let us now look at a more complicated circuit. Now the inputs to this gate are a bit different. So there is one standard input and the other input comes from a register which is part of the circuit. So the output Y is going to be not of XOR of X and R where R is the value of the register. In addition to this, the value of the register keeps changing because of this connection. So the value of R changes to XOR of X and the previous value of the register. So such a circuit with this kind of a feedback loop is called a sequential hardware circuit. Now let us look at a sample execution of this circuit. Assume that initially the value of R is 0 and the value of X is 1. Now the value of Y is going to be not of XOR of 1, 0. XOR of 1, 0 is going to be 1. Not of this is going to be 0. Fine. Now what is the next value of the register? It is going to be XOR of 1 and 0 which is going to be 1. So XOR of 1 and 0 gives me 1. This is fed back to the register. So the register value changes to 1 and now the input here changes to 1. By that time the value of X which is an external input could either be 0 or 1. We do not know. Suppose the value of x is 1. Now, what is y? xr of 1 and 1 is 0. Not of 0 is 1. Now, what 
does the value of r change to it changes to xr of 1 and 1 which is going to be 0 now the next input will have r equal to 0 now by that time the value of x could be anything suppose it was 0 now you have 0 and 0 here xr of 0 and 0 is 0 not of 0 is 1 and now what does the value of r change to it changes to xr of 0 0 which is going to be 0 the value of x again could be either 0 or 1 assuming this is 1 xr of 1 and 0 is going to be 1 not of 1 is 0 and you can keep doing this so this is giving me an execution of the circuit there are many more executions we started with 100 and we arbitrarily chose the values of x's here so how do we compactly represent the set of all executions of this circuit in other words how do we model this circuit now we are going to model this circuit as a transition system with some states and transitions so what would the states of this circuit be the states of the circuit are determined by the values of x r and y the values of x and r could be 0 or 1 depending on the value of x and r your y gets determined here are the states x could be 0 and r could be 0 if both x and r are 0 the value of y is xr of 0 0 which is 0 and not of 0 is 1 first of all there are four states depending on the values of x and r x could be 0 or 1 here these are the two states with x being 0 one of them has r equal to 0 and the other has r equal to 1 these are the two states with x equal to 1 one of them has r equal to 0 and the other has r equal to 1 so these are the four states of this circuit now what are the initial states initially let us assume that the register r is 0 the initial value of the input is unknown it could be either 0 or it could be 1 under this assumption there are two initial states the ones that have r equal to 0 we have determined the states we have determined the initial states what are the transitions of this transition system let's start from this state now with x is equal to 0, r equal to 0, y equal to 1, what could the next value of r be? The next value of r is going to be xr of 0 and 0 which is going to be 0. Now what is the next value of x? It could be either 0 or 1. So the two transitions are from 0, 0, 1 you could either stay in 0, 0, 1 or you can go to 1 0 0 so let me repeat if x is equal to 0 and r equal to 0 the value of register changes to xr of 0 comma 0 which is going to be 0 so the next state will have r equal to 0 since we do not know what x would be it can be either 0 or it can be 1 depending on what it is we have two transitions for example when we were here we computed the value of r next to be 0 and then we arbitrarily chose the value of x to be 1 that means we went to this state we could have even chosen 0 here in which case it would have depicted staying in this state now let us continue drawing the transitions of this transition system what about this state when you have x equal to 1 r equal to 0 the value of r next is going to be xr of 1 and 0 which is going to be 1 and the value of x is going to be unknown so it, it can be 0 or 1 hence you have two transitions one going to r equal to 1 x equal to 1 and the other going to r equal to 1 x equal to 0 with similar arguments you can complete the picture and this would be the final transition system executions like this 
correspond to paths in this transition system. For example, this is 1, 0, 0. So you started from here, you went to 1, 1, 1, then you went to 0, 0, 1, then you went to 1, 0, 0, then we went to 1, 1, 1, one uh, sorry, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on. This transition system is giving you a compact representation of the behavior of this circuit. So I hope you understand the modeling of this circuit as a transition system. I would like to point out two observations in this transition system. Firstly, notice that there are two initial states. There are more than one initial states. Secondly, there are states on which there are more than one transition on an action. For example, look at this. On a tick, you can either go here or you can go here. Look at this. On a tick, you can either go here or you can go here. So there is some kind of arbitrariness in the choice. This kind of a transition system is said to be non-deterministic. So in the last lecture, we saw what transition systems were. Now in this module, we just want to classify transition systems into two kinds. One are called deterministic transition systems and the other are called non-deterministic transition systems. In a deterministic transition system, you have a single initial state and for every state on an action, there is a single transition. In a non-deterministic transition system, you could either have multiple initial states or there can be states with multiple transitions on an action. Let me give some examples of deterministic and non-deterministic transition systems. Look at this transition systems. First of all, all of these are transition systems. I hope that is clear to you. Now let us look at this transition system. The initial state is Q0. At Q0 on an A, it can either stay here or it can go here. So this means this transition system is non-deterministic. On the other hand, look at this transition system. There is a single initial state. At Q0 on a B, it has a unique transition. At Q0 on an A, there is a unique transition. At Q1 on a B, there is a unique transition. Now look at this. A similar scenario occurs here. At Q0 on a B, you can either go here or you can go here. At Q1 on an A, you can either go here or you can go here. How is this resolved here? At Q0 on an A, you can just go here. On a B, you can just go here. On a C, you can just go here. At Q1 on an A, you can just go here. On a B, you can just go here. On a C, you can just go here. Now, so this is deterministic. Now what about this transition system? At Q0 on a B, you can just go here. At Q0 on an A, you can just go here. At Q1 on a B, you can just go here. This is fine, but there are two initial states. So this makes this transition system non-deterministic. Here, there is a single initial state. So this is deterministic. So this is a simple concept. I hope you are clear with this. Recall the transition system that modeled an ATM. Is this deterministic or non-deterministic? How many initial states are there? There is only one initial state. Is there a state which, which has multiple transitions on an action? Not this one. Not this one because from pin on a correct, you can just go here. On a wrong, you can just go here. Neither this state. At tran, on a balance, you can just go here. On a withdrawal, you can just go here. You can check all the states. There is a unique transition on an action. So this transition system is deterministic. 
what about the transition system which modeled the vending machine? This is again deterministic. There is a single initial state and every state has a unique transition on an action. What about the hardware circuit? So note that since every action was a tick, I have removed the tick from the picture for clarity. So when you have only one action, it is irrelevant. So note that here there are multiple initial states and there are multiple transitions from a state on an action. So this is a non-deterministic transition system. Why did we make use of non-determinism here? We did not know what the next value of x would be. It could either be 0 or it could be 1. So there was some incomplete information. Such incomplete information can be modeled using this feature of non-determinism. So let us look at another example of a hardware circuit. It's a modification of the previous circuit. So the inputs come from a register and an external input x. So the register value goes both to this gate and to this gate. Now the output y is just not of xr of x and r. It is going to be the same. Now how does the register value change? The register value changes as r of x and its previous value. Based on this, this is going to be the transition system. The states are again x is equal to 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And the value of y is going to be not of x or of x and r. So the states are the same as in the previous circuit. Now the transitions are different because the next value of r is going to be or of x and its previous value. So the next value of r is going to be or of 0 and 0. So r is going to be 0 but we do not know what x is. So this goes here with x is equal to 0, r equal to 0 and here with x being 1 and r is equal to 0. Now once you are here, r of 1 and 0 is going to be 1. So the two transitions from here are going to go to x equal to 1, r equal to 1 and x equal to 0, r equal to 1. So once the value of r becomes 1, it will maintain that value because r of 1 and anything is going to be 1. So that will give you this transition and this transition because you do not know again what x is going to be. So I hope this transition system is also clear. This way, given some hardware circuit like this, this could be other gates, NAND, AND, OR, okay, you can come up with a finite state machine corresponding to that. Note that you could also have more inputs, more registers, more outputs. And based on the number of inputs, registers and outputs, you can create your transition system. Let me summarize this module. So in this module, we looked at sequential hardware circuits. We saw how to model them using transition systems. While doing this, we made use of non-determinism. So we gave a classification as to what deterministic transition systems are and what non-deterministic transition systems are. So I have given the reference. Yet again, there are more details in the book. If you understand, it's well and good. But you don't have to worry if you do not understand all the details. For this part of the course, as long as this is clear, it is fine.